Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today we have, I swear to God, it's my wife's buddy scooter and a cautionary tale. So let's get started. I believe this scooter is from 2005. And while the wheels are from 2018, the valve stem was original. So you'll notice we are holding uh, no air in that. My wife went to Target to get some things and luckily it was the rear wheel that almost fell off, not the front wheel. That one has a little bit more to do with steering. But um, the valve seal here, you can see right there, nice little cut. Just dry rotted over time. So we're going to go ahead and replace those. This is for solid uh, rims versus spoked rims. So a spoked rim will have a um, tubed tire and the valve stem will be part of that tube. This one, we went ahead and put on a new tire. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Manufacture date, 2018. So uh, it's six years old, plenty of tread. Turns out this thing weighs less than uh, most humans. So um, there's not really a lot of wear or tear on the tire itself, but uh, in order to use the tire, it does help to have several pounds per square inch in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap this guy out. So you'll notice I am on the center stand. If you have one, it gets the wheel nice and easily off the ground, makes it easier to spin and get to the stem. On Amazon, you can get valve stems nice and cheap. Highest quality, probably not. Holds more air than that, probably. Pry bar, if I need to move and keep this tire out of the way, and then a couple of pliers and wrenches and all. So I'm gonna see if I can't just, yeah. It's right there. Well, that really takes the sport out of it. So I'm going to wedge the pry bar into place to hold that out of the way. You can tell it's a mushroom cap that is of a wider diameter inside the rim than outside the rim. So you're going to want to feed it in through this way instead of trying to push it in through that way. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Okay, so this just easily pushes out of the way. I use the pry bar to hold it out of the way and with a pair of pliers I was just able to break it in half um, it was two-thirds of the way gone so that one is El Destructo and there is some writing there doesn't appear to be a date so what I would recommend to you is while we replaced the tires in 2018 we didn't even consider the valve stems I got Eight of these for, I think it was less than $10 on Amazon, so it's not even that expensive. Uh, while you're in there, learn from my mistake. Go ahead and replace these if you need to. Uh, the older the vehicle, the heavier the vehicle, the more, um, let's say, aggressively you're going to drive the vehicle, the more likely you are to have this issue. So let's go ahead and pop this one back into place. The other one was pointing to the right side as far as the refill is concerned. And if it's on the side stand, the uh, valve stem pointing to the right is going to angle up and be easier to get to for uh, refilling with air. So let me go ahead and pop this one back into place. All right, so I wanted to show you, I just threaded the metal through. We're going to make sure that we're pointing towards the exhaust this way right here. And then we're just gonna push it into place and make sure oh that's not super easy one-handed so we're gonna cut we are the next day and that's why so i was having difficulties getting these into place they were kind of squishy and mushy so i froze them in the freezer have them on the size pack as i'm collecting things that's going to make the rubber a little more plasticky so uh a little less give and squish to them and it's going to shrink them a little bit as um any guy who jumps into a cold pool will attest to so between the two let's see if that makes it slip in a little better or not loving the god rays so that absolutely made the difference this went in first try guys so uh if in doubt freeze it out go ahead and use some um thermal shrinkage to your advantage Nice and ice cold, slipped right into place. We do have some of the white lithium grease on there as well. And it just slicked right into place. Very, very simple to do. 
Uh, as this is a 90 degree angle, you don't really have anything to pull on as you're trying to push in this way. So I just put some pliers on there and gave it a rotate and it popped in first try. Um, I would say 15% as difficult as yesterday. So the freezing absolutely works. And you'll notice there are two of them. Well, this one failed. It's just a matter of time until the front one fails. So I am, of course, going to swap them both out. But um, very simple to do. So let me go ahead and get the other side done as well. Again, we are on the center stand with enough weight. I can lower the bike. Uh, actually, it's staying right there. So quite a bit of space underneath there makes it rather simple to do. Moving to the front, the cap on this one actually has a tool built in. So if you push hard enough, which because that moves with one hand, I probably won't be able to show you, but that tool should grip and remove that stem. So first we're going to release all the air. Very boring, I'll cut back when it's done and we'll see if that tool works as well. All right, so all of the air is out and that tool doesn't work. As a matter of fact, it starts rounding out. This is probably as old as the bike, so 2005, so 20 years old. That plastic has failed. We really don't have to remove that valve stem uh, section in there. You can see it's kind of a crossbar going across there. You could unscrew and thread out the internals and that would allow it to bleed out completely, which we don't necessarily need to do. Now I'm just going to break the um, uh, seam, is it? Whatever. And we're going to be able to get in there. We're going to pull it out the same way we did on the backside. So let's go ahead and pop it. Okay, so with the bead, not seam, broken, we have our uh, valve stem hole there. And this one also sheared off um, quite easily. So I'm going to have to find the other half of that. But uh, let's go ahead and find the other half and we can pull this guy out. Uh, what I did is without having the actual tools that I need, I took a crowbar wedged it in here as deep as I can. If it's going to scratch the metal, I don't want it scratching here, I want it scratching on the inside. And I shifted the whole tire in along the seam. Then I switched to this side and shifted it again, and now you can see it's popped freely. The other way I believe you can do it is a tension strap. Uh, run it through your rim up over the tire and start tensioning it down. You may have to put like a two by four block or something and that will crush the tire and eventually pop the seam. Um, you could also be damaging the cords and all, so I would do it my way. But um, that's what we have there. Let me go ahead and dig that other bit out and we can put the frozen plug in place. And there we go. So valve stem is back in place. I did get the inside cap off and you can see, once it focuses, one side looks freshly ripped from noon to nine to six o'clock here. And from noon to three to six o'clock is kind of chunked up. So it looks like it was on its way to failing, um, starting to dry up a little bit. So uh, my recommendation to you is if you're gonna be replacing the tires, go ahead and replace the valve stems because when one of your tire tires fails, that's, uh, 50% of um, your ability to stay upright and steer and brake. So uh, don't put yourself in that situation. Learn from my mistake. Uh, this is set. Let's go ahead and fill it with air. All right. So 22 in the front and 25 PSI in the rear. And we are squared away. So uh, relatively simple to do. Didn't take any real specialty tools or anything, but... Um, Go ahead and replace your valve stems as you replace your tires. Ah, learn from my mistake. So this is Outside the Target Demographic. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.